Today on Grow It With Science, we're looking at the basics of photosynthesis. Just like all living things, plants need food to grow and eventually reproduce. But since they can't just eat a Snickers, they've had to come up with a way to make their own food. And this is where photosynthesis comes in. Plants use light energy from the sun to create sugar in the form of glucose. This food isn't just important to the plant, but also to any other organism like you, for example, that might come along and eat it. Next time that you eat some fruit, you'll know that all that sweetness is sugar created from photosynthesized sunlight. During photosynthesis, a plant will use energy from the sun to turn carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. So let's make this into a basic equation. Taking carbon dioxide plus water using light with chlorophyll becomes glucose and oxygen. If I was to show you the actual molecular makeup of this equation, it would look like this. Six carbon dioxide molecules plus six water molecules become one glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. And if I split these up into the basic building blocks, we can see how this reaction happens. So we have six carbon dioxide molecules, which means we have six carbon atoms and six times two oxygen atoms, so 12. We also have six water molecules, which is six times two hydrogen atoms, or 12, and six oxygen. Following the photosynthesis reactions, we now have one glucose molecule, which is made of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. This then leaves us with 12 oxygen atoms left over, which then pair together to give us six oxygen molecules. The light energy that plants require is absorbed by a green pigment in the leaves called chlorophyll. You may not have realized, but when you see green leaves and green grass, this is because the plant is reflecting the green light that it doesn't actually need, and is absorbing the red and blue light that it does need for photosynthesis. This is why you'll often see artificial growing lamps that give off purple light. The first thing the plant needs is carbon dioxide. As you'll probably already know, plants and trees absorb carbon dioxide from the air. This happens through tiny holes on the underside of the leaves, called stomata. The next ingredient, water, comes from the soil and is absorbed by the roots. The water is then transported up through the plant to the leaves in the xylem vessels, which are narrow hollow tubes that run up through the stem to the leaves, made from lignin. Oxygen is formed as a byproduct in the creation of the glucose. Some of it gets used in respiration, along with some of the glucose, in order for the plant cells to live. If the rate of photosynthesis is high enough, the plant will give out oxygen into the air, which is fantastic for those of us that like to breathe it. Glucose is the main building block for creating everything that the plant needs to live and grow. So here's what plants do with all the glucose that isn't used in respiration. Join a load of glucose molecules together and you've got starch, which the plant can use as an energy store. You'll see this in potatoes, for example, where the plant's made a big lump of starchy carbs that it can save for later. Glucose can be turned into lipids, which are fat and oils that you find in seeds. So next time you use sunflower oil or peanut butter, you've got photosynthesis to thank again. Again, by joining a load of glucose molecules together, the plant can create cellulose to make its cell walls and to make the cell walls stronger. This is what gives the plant rigidity. Finally, by combining glucose with nitrates absorbed from the soil through the roots, the plant creates amino acids, which in turn can be joined together to make proteins. So it's easy to see how important this one reaction is and how much of a difference it makes to your everyday life. Well, that's as far as I'll be delving into photosynthesis for today, but keep an eye out on my channel for future science videos where I'll be covering photosynthesis in a high level of detail, along with a ton of other plant science subjects. Don't forget to subscribe to Grow Up With Science, and if this video has helped you to understand photosynthesis a bit better, give it a like and let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Oh, there's a giant bee.